been sat on this saw for um, maybe two years, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, there's a funny little story behind this actually. A long time ago I went to a local company to get some aluminium like round stock, like some big chunk of billet. Because my Colchester's original motor had burnt out and the motor I put in there was I think an inch and a quarter or 28 mil um, shaft on the motor and I didn't want to make I didn't want to modify the original pulley so I went there and bought some little lump of aluminium and made up a new pulley for the student <laughs> uh, then some time later I found uh, nearby someone selling a really old band so I think it's a line it was from a line driven like line shaft driven setup uh, so I bought that I was going to start working on it and um, I needed some aluminium to make some pulleys so I went back to that factory that company and I was like oh yeah you know um, you got any aluminium billets left to like off cuts and that I need to make a pulley up and he asked me he goes oh, what do you want to make an aluminium pulley up for and I was like oh I've got a bandsaw that I need to do. And he went, oh, right, okay. Uh, follow me a minute. And he takes me over to another part of the company. Uh, different name, still part of this company that he owns. He owns quite a bit. And he shows me this thing. He goes, um, is that any use to you? And I was like, well, yeah, but I've got like £20 to my name at the moment. Uh, enough to come and get some bits of aluminium. He went, oh no, he went, don't give me nothing for it. He said it's going to get thrown away. Bonus, you know. So I said to him, okay, uh, even though I drive quite a large car, I was going to lay this down in the back. He went, no, no, that's all right. He went, I'm on my tea break, I'll bung it in the van and take it to yours for you. So um, he brings this bloody thing out to my house for me for nothing. It's only, I suppose it's about five miles away, but even so, um, bloody good of him. I have spent a bit of time on this already, uh, back then, as once I had a tinker around with it and got everything working, the pulleys inside of this bandsaw were naff. Someone had bored out the centre of the original aluminium pulleys, inserted a piece of steel tube and then with a slot cut through it to make some sort of keyway. Obviously the keyway, the original key, had gone around and around and around inside the aluminium and ripped it to shreds. Uh, and the same thing had happened when this steel sleeve had been put in there. That spun and ripped the pulley to pieces. So I still went back to that factory and said, oh, I, I still need some aluminium. Um, I've got to make some pulleys up for this thing. Which I've done a long time ago. And then uh, I turned it on and it cut like crap. And that's where this comes in now. Well, I've got two choices. I've got the easy fix and I've got the fix I'm probably going to do. The easy fix is to just get some bronze and replace the bronze guides. The fix I'm going to do is I'm going to make new blade guides and uh, put little roller bearings on them just because it's ten times more awkward than buying bronze but it's free because I've got some bearings sitting around and I'm pretty sure I've got some lumps of something or other I can fandangle something out of and we're going to make some guides. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in a little bit because you're a long way away. Long, long way away. Uh, so yeah, I've got to replace this. Although to be honest with you, that's got a, that's got a disc on it at the minute. And then down here, uh, I've also got to do a repair down here as well, which will be interesting. There's a couple of... Um, little bronze wear pads up in here which you can't see at the minute so yeah I'm just gonna um, quickly take the table off of this and show you some of the issues I've got left 
before I can put this thing back to work. As usual, my shed is so bloody warm. And then in a winter you freeze your ass off. So once you just cut the wood at some point, which you yeah, definitely get the sawdust in there. It's a wood saw. Okay, that's what we've got. Hmm. If I'm honest, it shouldn't be too hard to make up a top guide because all I need to do is uh, remove this sort of fork and make up a new one and some eccentric bolts so that's not too bad kind of the same with this, I can remove these two uh, little slider assemblies then make up some new ones with bearings on them nice and simple found some hex stock to turn these out of uh, ironically this hex stock came from the same place as this bandsaw uh, only this was already in the scrap bin <laughs> loads of sort of 12 inch off cuts I figured the easiest way to create the offset to give like the eccentric adjustment would be to put a little bit of uh, 3mm sheet steel into the jaws of the chuck. I should have just got the four drawer out really but uh, to be honest I'm not actually sure where my four drawer is.
all that effort. Where'd it go? There it is. That's the lower uh, guides done. It took two attempts because uh, I didn't, I didn't make the bolts eccentric enough. Basically. Uh, this is the guide for the upper blades, for the upper blade rather. My thinking is to um, basically machine up a round spigoted T with two holes drilled parallel to the T that I can insert the failed eccentric spigots into. So it's waste of material that way. Uh, so I've got this bit of... It's very heavy whatever this is. I think it's um... I think it was a hydraulic ram, like the actual rod. Whatever it is, I've got loads of it, and it's as heavy as anything. Uh, yeah, so let's get on with that. Whatever this material is, it does not like producing nice chips are just bird nests. No matter what I did I couldn't get feeds or speeds to uh, break these chips up. So in the end I decided well I'll go with like a deeper depth of cut and just try and get this over and done with. Um, the finish was really nice though. Which is surprising because it's producing long old stringy chips and yet the finish is coming out really good. So I don't know. I'm not sure what the heck this metal actually is, but it might be a machine. Nice fresh carbide end mill. Don't matter what that material is made of, it's gonna cut. <laughs> to look into that squeaking uh, that's a bit annoying I think it's well it's from the motor in the base uh, the main motor either it's the belts for a bit naff or potentially 
uh, they're not lined up perfectly with the upper and lower pulley I might have to crawl into the bottom of this mill and have a look at that uh, when I'm next on it This is the little um, upper blade guide uh, bit. A couple of little five mil grub screws in it. Two nine and a half mil holes. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. So goes into there. I'm using the original thrust bearings because you know why not if they work? There's nothing wrong with them. So thrust bearing and then I got away with salvaging the other two uh, eccentric pillars um, they weren't eccentric enough for the lower blade guide but they're adequate for the upper blade guide so I turned them down a little bit further and uh, you know, just adjusted them to serve a purpose. Okay, man, in you go. Possibly should have given myself a bit more clearance with the uh, little slot. I'm using a little um, like C clips. So not need, I need that much clearance, but these can open up quite a long way. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to offer it up to the saw.
So there's the upper guides and the lower guides were just a whoops. Just a simple case of uh, just a simple case of making up some spigots for them to attach to. Now to address the the bigger issue with this this break. Now looking at the other side which is obviously intact it's not a very big chunk that's missing I could possibly bodge something up so as I can use this in its current state um, Fortunately, I was considering um, brazing it. Uh, a couple of things I'm not sure about. Firstly, uh, can I bronze braze with a TIG set, or do I need the like the heated torch? Or could I get away with maybe popping a, a little blowtorch? there as well just to spread the heat out into the casting a little bit and let it cool down slower because I imagine it will probably crack uh, so there's that and will it TIG weld ok using CO2 uh, my friend who's a scrappy gave me a ping earlier on and he's given me a little oxy acetylene set problem is with that, the hoses are shot everything else is alright uh, whether or not I can get the bottles refilled I don't know um, got to also cut a new blade I got, I got the guy who gave me this gave me plenty of um, coils of blades so I'm sorted for that but this blade is um, it's naff I'm not too sure how to go about this. If I'm gonna braze it or weld it, either way, I think if I'm gonna add material to this, I think the best thing to do is um, it looks like someone's tried welding the original brake to me uh, when it like was in the factory I got it from. Uh, I think my best option will probably be to clean up that edge. I don't know. I think cleaning up the edge no matter what, I'm going to have to clean up the edge a fair bit. Uh, if I clean up the edge, uh, prepare, prepare a little block of steel, if I go and braze the bit of steel to it, maybe I can machine it from that rather than trying to machine the block and then braze it to it. I think the best bet might be to braze a piece of steel to it and then machine it. I'm just not sure because this is cast iron and cast iron is something other than well, I've never repaired cast iron cast aluminium that's a piece of piss cast iron is a bit different especially when you've got no iron to bloody bond to it uh. What I might do, I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put the video up with as far as I've got, just just to get some feedback. If anyone can tell me the right way to go about doing this, uh, I'd be very much appreciative. Be easier if it can be braised with a TIG set. 
because I haven't got the money at the moment to buy new hoses for that oxyacetylene gear that my friend's giving me. Uh, but if the oxyacetylene is probably the only way to go, then obviously I'm going to have to get uh, oxyacetylene hoses. If I edit this down, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, and answers in the comments section because uh, you know you can't send postcards.